Okay friends, uh, welcome to uh, part uh, one of our video tutorial on assignment nine. Uh, this assignment is based on case number 12 uh, that can be found in your textbook on page uh, 231. Uh, 231. Um, actually before starting this video tutorial I strongly suggest that you go to the textbook and you read that case, or maybe at least the background part of it. Um, for this particular assignment, I would like to use the so-called uh, uh, scientific paradigm. In other words, I, I will try to explain to you how the scientists go uh, about addressing the problem discussed in the case. And the reason I'm adopting this uh, scientific paradigm perspective is that uh, you know the scientific paradigm is getting increasingly popular in the world of business. You've probably heard that uh, you know businesses are increasingly uh, hiring uh, people for the position of a data scientist or data analyst. And uh, you know this position uh, requires basically you know using uh, the scientific re uh, s the scientific method or the research method for addressing practical business problems. Uh, there's no like um, you know there is no like single recipe how researchers or scientists go about addressing problems. In fact, some people would argue that this is a, a very massive pr pr process, and you know there is a leap of faith, and you know there is going back and forth between different steps. Uh, but but nevertheless, uh, the fundamentals st stay the same. So I will talk about those fundamentals in this presentation. In other words, I will link the fundamentals of the scientific method or scientific paradigm to this particular case uh, discussed in uh, in your textbook on page 231. Okay, so um, so where wh where does science uh, start? Well, typically science uh, starts uh, with this with a particular problem that uh, that needs to be addressed using scientific tools and scientific methods. Now, if you read the case, you will see that the problem in the case is very narrowly defined, and in fact, this is something uh, I like about this case. So, so the main problem in the case is concussions among football players. So in this case, you have to adopt a stance of a data scientist or data analyst or somebody just uh, you know working for a college football team, and uh, this this football team uh, is also in a conference with seven other college teams. <clears throat> so they have like this uh, game schedule and practice schedule, but uh, the main problem uh, the main problem that your team is facing together with the entire conference is that. Concussions are becoming, uh, you know, more common, uh, uh, or concussions are very common among football players. Uh, you know, again, if you go back to the textbook and read the case, you'll find out something about concussions. I mean, you probably know that it's a head injury. You know, it happens when, uh, you know, basically your brain uh, hits hits the, uh, you know, the wall of your skull. Uh, that typically happens when basically you get hit on the head. You know, in in in, in different ways. For example, you can fall down. And you can hit the ground with your head, or somebody can run into you, and you know, uh, like run with with his his or her knee, and that's how you get concussion. As the case uh, says, in the old days, concussion was considered to be a relatively minor injury. In fact, you know, once you get a concussion, if you get a concussion, God forbid, you know, you were expected to recover for a few minutes and then you know go back and you know continue the game. But nowadays, the medical community uh, believes that uh, even a single concussion can have serious long-term impact on somebody's health, you know, especially you know health related to to the brain function. So, uh, so that's why concussions uh, are increasingly viewed as uh, serious injuries, and uh, you know, it's also something that is increasingly viewed as a big problem by. Uh, you know, by many universities, not only not only in the context of football games, but all kinds of sports, because football is not only is not the only sport where you can get concussion. I mean, there are different contact sports. Um, I don't know, uh, rugby, soccer, um, even even some uh, you know track and field. I think even some track and field you know sports. You know, they they also have this you know, risk of somebody getting a concussion. So, anyways. It's a serious problem, uh, and uh, it's something that requires your attention. And you, as a data scientist or as a data analyst, you know you're assigned to this task of addressing this problem. And you know, uh, going back to the scientific paradigm, uh, this is uh, this is where science starts. This is how scientists start. Uh, they try to formulate uh, the problem that they are going to address in a very you know narrow, specific way. Now, again, luckily, in, in this case, the problem is defined for you, I believe, in a very uh, you know, specific and narrow way. So, you know, the problem is concussions, okay? So, what do you do next? What, what do you do after defining a problem that, that you are trying to address? Well, 
a lot of the times uh, people just uh, jump to solutions. By people, I mean like you know just general people, you know, you know business professionals. Uh, they jump, uh, they jump into solutions. Now that may not be a good thing because uh, first of first of all, uh, you know, you know the first solution that comes to your mind may not be the best one. Okay. Number two, uh, maybe you shouldn't even be looking. Uh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be inventing any solutions. You shouldn't be proposing any solutions because it could be. And and there's uh, there's always you know no matter what kind of problem you come up with, there's always a very high chance of that. It could be that somebody in the past already addressed your problem. Okay. And overall, uh, before you address a problem, you really need to become knowledgeable in this problem area. So the second thing that scientists will do, they will do a literature review. Literature review mean, means uh, you know you you try to find credible sources uh, that seem to discuss your problem. And uh, once you identify those sources, like you know scientific papers, maybe books, maybe reports, uh, you go through them. And you know when you read those papers, when you read those reports, research articles. Uh, first of all, you will educate yourself more about the problem. You know, you will understand. You know, in our in our case, you will understand better what concussion is. You know, what leads to concussion. Uh, let's say, what kind of uh, impact you need to have. Uh, you know, to 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 get a concussion. Uh, what are the most uh, you know dangerous sports with respect to concussion and all those things. So that's something that you will figure out from the literature review. Well, in our case, we're not doing any literature review because all the information that you need is discussed in that case. But typically, you know, typically you need to do literature review, literature review meaning to read more about this problem. Okay. Uh, also, uh, when, when you read uh, when you read those articles, those sources about your problem, which is concussion, you will start having some preliminary ideas for a theory. Now, uh, a lot of the times, you know, when people say, you know, hear the word theory, you know, they say, well, you know, it's something that is not relevant. It's something that is boring. Uh, this is something that scientists do, and this is something that has no relevance to real life. Now, this is not true because uh, you, without knowing that, you know, you operate daily on a daily basis. You operate with some kind of theories in your head. In other words, theories are some kind of uh, are, are belief, basically beliefs that you have about how this world works. Okay. So, for example, as a student, you may have a theory that uh, you know if you if you work hard. You know, if you study hard in a particular course, uh, then uh, you will get a good grade. So that's your theory. You know, your theory can be, you know, depicted with a diagram. So here we have studying. Right? So this is one variable because uh, theory eventually, uh, scientists like to formulate theories in terms of specific hypotheses. Now, hypotheses like specific statements that outline relationships between variables that are related to a problem area. So studying uh, leads to uh, high grades, okay, or good grades, or just simply grades. That's your variable, okay, and the relationship is positive. So th this is your theory, okay, and scientific theories they're just uh, just uh, the same thing. I mean, they're they're specific statements about relationships between two variables. Uh, now, in your case, uh, one second. Now, in your case, uh, your dependent variable or your variable of interest, you know, something that you're trying to understand better, something that you're trying to predict, is concussions, right? So when you do concussions and when you read this case, I mean, when, when you do literature review, uh, when you read this case, you may have some preliminary ideas, um, you know, what, what kind of uh, variables, what kind of parameters can possibly lead to concussions. Um, uh, of course, you will get even more ideas if you do some reading out, readings outside of the case, especially if you're not familiar with some of the rules and nuances of football. So, you know, one one uh, theory that you may have after reading that case is that type of practice, uh, type of practice, may be related uh, to concussions. For example. You know, some coaches believe in full contact practice where there's a lot of interaction between players. Uh, other coaches may emphasize, you know, general physical development, so there is less, uh, you know, man-to-man -man contact uh, during practices, and therefore, you know, there's less risk of somebody getting concussion. But again, from a theoretical standpoint, you can argue the reverse. I mean, you can argue that, well, if somebody practices, you know, if somebody, if a coach has this belief that man-to-man -man practice is actually good, then players become more ready for, for actual games, you know, they become more prepared and they're less likely to receive an injury such as concussion. Uh, then uh, player position 
may certainly be related to concussions, right? For example, one idea that uh, that came that occurred to me after reading that case is that offensive players probably will get more concussions because they are the the, the frequent target for defensive players. In other words, they are attacked by defensive uh, players. So it's not a plus sign in this case. We're just saying in general. Uh, player position is related. I mean, I would say that offensive players, they get more injuries, including more concussions, while defensive players, they're not as targeted, you know, so they get less injuries. And also, uh, you know, offensive players, you know, they are, they are like smaller because they need to run fast, uh, they need to catch the ball. So that's why, you know, they're, they're, you know, just from the perspective of simple mechanics and laws of physics, they're more likely to receive an injury. So that's what, uh, that's what theory is all about. Um, One second. Yeah, that's what theory is all about. I mean, you're trying to formulate certain beliefs about your problem, about your dependent variable, which is uh, concussions, right? And once once you once you formulate those beliefs, and if those beliefs are true, it means that you know your research leads to a better understanding of a particular player. For example, if it is proven by data, something that we're going to talk about later on, if it's proven by data that um, you know type of you know type of player position, let's say offensive versus defensive, influences the frequency of concussion. And let's say you find that offensive players indeed have higher frequencies or high, high, uh, have a higher chance of, of, of receiving a concussion, then maybe you should direct your efforts to working with offensive players, let's say coaching them on how to avoid uh, injuries or you know, developing uh, new and better equipment that would protect maybe helmets, right? Specifically helmets that would protect offensive players from concussion. So, so your theory, if proven right, you know, can be used to address uh, the problem uh, that you stated uh, right here. Now, one one important characteristic of science is that no matter what you believe in, uh, no matter what kind of ideas you 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 come up with, right? Uh, regardless of how many degrees you have or how uh, how much authority how much respect you have from the public you know as a scientist as a policymaker it doesn't matter regardless of who uh, com comes up with an idea and regardless what kind of idea he or she comes up with this idea needs to be tested okay in other words everything needs to be subjected to a test that's what scientists do they don't believe in opinions they don't believe in uh, gut feelings right uh, and, uh, I mean, they're okay if you come up with different ideas, uh, but you know they will not take your ideas uh, uh, seriously unless you prove it from data. You prove it by exposing, by testing your idea in the real world. Okay, so data and methodology is something that is uh, data methodology is, is the step where you know based on your beliefs, based on your hypothesis, you collect data and you subject your beliefs to a test. Now, the reason I'm putting uh, data and methodology is like one single step because the kind of methodology you select. Uh, let's say an experimental design, or you know, let's say regression analysis, uh, survey, you know, survey research that, that where regression analysis is used. Depending on the methodology, depending on what kind of methodology you select, uh, you will also, you know, it will your selection, your choice will also impact your data. You know, how you collect data and what kind of data you have. Now, uh, oftentimes, uh, uh, data scientists and, and uh, scientists in general, you know, they don't have the luxury of collecting data. I mean, ideally, of course, you need to collect data that fully reflects your theoretical model. You know, this is, this is your theoretical model. Uh, so ideally, your, your data needs to be collected specifically for your theoretical model so that your theoretical model can be tested. Uh, but as you know, collecting data can be uh, very expensive. For example, uh, I mean... You, you may not you may not be able to create data for an experimental design uh, on on football concussions for example it may be impossible for a variety of reasons to ask players let's say football let's say professional football players or college players to hit hit each other in a certain way or collide in a certain way and then you will see whether those collisions lead to concussions or not well first of all uh, they may not have time for it uh, number two they may not be willing to do that because they don't want to get uh, extra injury right for nothing so that's why you may not be able to collect data. So oftentimes, you know, scientists and uh, you know, data scientists and organizations they have to go with whatever data they already have. The so-called archival data, the data the data is already that is already available. Because collecting primary data, collecting your own data is is often uh, either impossible or prohibitively expensive. Now, a classic case where collecting data uh, may be um, you know very difficult, you know, like medical research, uh, for example, uh, let's say. Um, uh, let's say you're testing the effectiveness of, of a drug that, that is supposed to prevent cancer 
and then you have two groups of people, um, you know, let's say one group of people gets the drug, the other doesn't. Well, the problem with this design is that how, you know, it's, it's somewhat unethical not to give a drug that can potentially cure, cure cancer just for the sake of proving that this drug works. So, so there are all kinds of problems, you know, related to, to various uh, research designs and all those pro data problems. And all those data problems lead to, to the um, situation where you just cannot collect data. You need to use whatever you have. And this is something that is something that we will talk about in part two. You know, we'll talk about the data that is given to you, and you have to test some of your theories, some of your beliefs about what causes concussion using the data that is available. So this concludes part one of our video presentation uh, on uh, assignment nine. Uh, thank you for listening.